This is a fa ha hawker fa ha hawker pa 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 hawker pa 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 pa. It's just super cool fish, guys. I mean, I'm like super stoked about this fish. Watch him. You see him looking at it. Look at it. Eh, I ain't worried about you, man. I want, I want these snails in here. Smash on them. Awesome fish, guys. If y'all have the opportunity to keep, uh, well, any puffer, uh, period, definitely keep one. Uh, another puffer, you can see he's all full of snails and just keeps on eating them, but <coughs> another puffer that's uh, in my desperately want to keep list is uh, the Congo puffer. Now the Congo puffer is uh, it's a red puffer and uh, they don't get as big as the Fajacas. Uh, Fajacas can get a uh, you know, 17, 18 plus, right around there. Look at this guy. What, what, what was that, dude? I don't know. Just super interesting. Uh, I have some more fish that should be here tomorrow, God willing. So uh, definitely stay tuned for that. Uh, I just really wanted to, you know, make a video solely on this fish. Um, I'll do uh, like a description type video of care requirements, uh, size, information about this fish uh, because they're actually really interesting and, uh, you know, there's some really interesting features about these fish uh, that are just mind-blowing and uh, super, super interesting. And, uh, you know, so, I'm just gonna let this video roll out and you can watch them a little bit. Maybe you can catch them crunching on a snail again. It's cool. I don't know if the video picks it up, but you can actually hear him crunching the snails. So, another puffer I'd like to keep is uh, a hairy puffer, or uh, some people call it a twig puffer. And, uh, you know, it kind of looks like it has, like, little hairs all over it. Uh, really, really cool-looking puffer. That along with the Congo, you can see him, he got, a, he got another snail there. Uh, definitely want to keep them. But, uh, this guy, he's going to be the only puffer I keep for a little while. I'm going to get my bearings with these types of fish and, uh, you know, you know, learn them inside and out. I mean, I've kept dwarf puffers in the past, uh, you know, the, the, the uh, Malamar puffer or the Indian dwarf puffer, whatever you want to call them, those little guys. Uh, I kept them before and, you know, just always interested in puffers. I mean, they're just really awesome fish to me. Uh, I don't know what about them makes them so interesting, but, I mean, you can see, I mean, they're super, super cool. Uh, scaleless, or scaleless, it's hard to say, but, uh, scaleless fish, uh, they do create a, uh, toxin inside of their flesh, uh, it's the same exact toxin that the blue-ringed octopus produces, uh, so that's really cool, um, like I said, they get 17 to 18 inches, um, they get beautiful patterns on them. Uh, if I can include a photo, uh, I will at the end of this video, but, um, just, I mean, they get, I mean, they get gorgeous. They get some, like, burgundies and some gold color in them, and then their belly is like a yellow and goes into a white color. I mean, they're just super, super cool. And, uh, you know, the reason I wanted one so small is... Uh, you know, I wanted to fully experience raising this fish, and to fully experience raising any fish, uh, it's best to get them uh, when they're still either babies or juveniles, and uh, from what I've read on these fish, uh, this guy right here is anywhere from four to six months old, so uh, relatively young or, you know, really young fish, you can see just chomp down on the snail there, 
but uh, definitely a younger a younger fish uh, and this fish does get large guys uh, you know you can raise them inside of a smaller aquarium like I am but eventually they're gonna need 125 plus gallons to uh, to, to thrive they have to be I mean you have to have a you have to keep them in a tank when they're full grown they have to be in a tank that is wider than they are long or their tail can actually deform and uh, you know stunt and stuff like that so uh, really interesting uh, I'll definitely do a care video on them uh, by no means am I an expert you know I'm just gonna say what I've read and what I've witnessed so far with the fish uh, but you know I'll definitely do a care video for everybody and you know let y'all know a little more information on them I want them to go after one of those big pond slash neurite whatever type of snail that is back there uh, but I mean he's just devouring these things he hasn't touched the blood worms I uh, tried some brine shrimp as well uh, he hadn't touched either one so uh, but I mean he's definitely oh look at that there's a little bitty snail on that rock you can see it right at the tip there but uh, I mean he's vicious guys this fish is vicious and he is so young uh, he, when he sees his reflection in the glass, uh, I mean, he tries to attack it. I mean, these fish are vicious. Uh, so definitely, uh, you know, single specimen tanks with just these guys. Uh, they are aggressive towards their, towards each other, towards their own species. So, uh, it's suggested that you only keep one puffer per tank. Now, is that to say that, you know, you can't keep other fish with them? No. I have two plecos in here that he hasn't bothered or anything. They haven't bothered him either. So uh, I'm sure when he gets a little bit bigger, uh, you know, uh, that that circumstance may change. And uh, you know, but uh, definitely excited to to bring y'all on this journey along with me. I hope y'all are excited too. Um, it's just like I'm super excited about this fish, guys. I hope y'all are too. Uh, with that said, I hope y'all enjoyed today's second video. Be sure to rate, comment, and subscribe. Let me know what y'all think about this little guy or girl. Uh, they're extremely difficult to sex, uh, so I'm going to wait till he gets a little bit bigger and possibly vent him. Uh, I don't care if it's a male or a female because uh, breeding these guys, I mean, all of these guys are wild caught, guys. I mean, this is a wild caught fish. Uh, they're extremely difficult to breed in aquaria, and reason being is because in the wild, they actually breed at a depth of 50 feet or more. So, uh, another interesting fact about these fish. Now, it has been done. Uh, they have been spawned in aquaria with a limited number of fry. Uh, there is documented uh, spawnings in aquaria, so uh, that's really cool, but they're extremely difficult to... Uh, breed one because they are so aggressive towards each other and two because uh, they do breed at depths of 50 feet or more so uh, like I said anyways I'll let y'all go it's already ran to uh, nine minutes now dang but I uh, hope y'all enjoyed be sure to rate comment and subscribe go check out aquatic support systems on Facebook go sub subscribe to all the members of team aquatic support uh, hit that like button guys, share, uh, we'll be having a giveaway uh, coming out very, very soon. Uh, I'm waiting to hit 2,000 subscribers and I'm really, really close, so uh, definitely share the video so we can uh, get that pumping and I can get some cool prizes out to y'all, it's going to be really easy to enter. Uh, with that said, this is what I'm doing, this is what I've done, stay true to the hobby, and we'll see y'all next time guys. Thanks for watching. Peace.